Right guys, how you doing now? Uh, today I had a little bit of a different idea for a video. One thing I've always done on this channel is talk a lot about football, whether that's real life football transfers, whether that's opinions on players, whether it's match reactions, whether it's FIFA, it's always been about football. One team that I've never spoke about is my team and that is Charlton Athletic and there are kind of reasons for that but today I think it's time to rectify that and let's bring them up to the forefront because they really do need to be spoken about these days, they really do. There's a lot going on at the club and I think it's about time that we spoke about them basically. Now, for the non Charlton fans that are watching this, right, I'm going to give you a little overview of the modern history of Charlton Athletic because it might surprise you what a good and sort of big club we are. And that's what a lot of people seem to forget these days. For existing Charlton fans who already know this, you can skip the video right now to the next point, which is going to be talking about the potential transfers of this summer in 2017 and how it's gonna uh, bode for our next season. So in the late 80s or the mid 80s, I think it was 1984, Charlton went into administration. And the years following that up until sort of nine, through to the early 90s, we had some really difficult times. We lost the Valley, which is our, obviously our home ground. Um, and we had to play at places like Crystal Palace, at places like West Ham, before the fans finally fought for their club and got the ground back. And the fans really did fight for it. And it was the fans that managed to get the club back on its feet again. Now, soon after this, we had the years of Alan Kirbishley, who was probably Charlton's best manager of all time, bar Jimmy Seed, who took Charlton to glory back in the sort of war days in the 40s and I think 50s as well. Uh, won the FA Cup and all that kind of stuff. And if we skip forward a few years, in 1998, he took us to the playoff final against Sunderland, which is probably well is widely considered to be the greatest playoff final of all time it was a 4-4 game that Cholton won on penalties now we got promoted to the Premier League came straight back down again and then went straight back up again as champions and in 2000 we cemented ourselves in the in the Premier League and had seven seasons in the Premier League and one of those seasons we nearly had Champions League qualification but Scott Parker left in the January transfer window to Chelsea when we were sitting in the top four quite comfortably and we had a dip in form towards the end of the season and lost a few points and missed out on the Champions League by only a few points. Now as money started taking over the game more and more and more we sort of slipped down the leagues and we got relegated in 2007 to the Championship. Now by this time we were probably considered a pretty good Premier League sort of championship kind of club in terms of stature. So after this we had some really tough times under managers like Alan Pardew, Ian Dowie and we actually ended up sinking from the Championship down to League One before Chris Powell came and took over and won us promotion to the, as champions with a record point tally back up to the championship in 2011 and then not only that but the next season he took us to ninth place in the championship straight away only a few points off of the playoffs before the dark times hit now the dark times that Charlton fans refer to now is when Roland Duchatelet the Belgian owner came into the club now he did things like get rid of a load of our players who he deemed weren't good enough and brought in players from his network of clubs so he owns other clubs like Alcoron in Spain like Standard Liège and St. Trudin and he was bringing in players from them teams and putting them into Cholton and thinking they're good enough to compete in the championship and fight for promotion. Now inevitably since then a lot more has happened that he and his CEO of Cholton, Catrian Mayer or Myra, I'm not even sure to this day how you pronounce it, they've repeatedly pretty much mugged off Cholton fans over and over and over again and the way the club's being run is just not okay. Now at this point there's too much for me to talk about in this regard so I'm going to refer you to a documentary which is really 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 good that will give you a better idea of how these people ran our club into the ground. So that brings us back to today and welcome back Charlton fans uh, where we have Carl Robinson in charge of our football club. Now I don't mind the guy and he's not in charge I'm not saying we've got a new owner obviously I'm saying that he is the manager of our club. Now he had some spells at MK Dons or he had a spell at MK Dons where he did very well and um, got them promoted to the championship but then had a bit of a dodgy season got them back relegated again. They got relegated in the same season as us and now he's basically our manager he's very young I think he's 37 or something like that and he's trying to do a similar thing to what Chris Powell did he says in rebuilding our club getting some signings and making us competitive to go back to the championship again last season we were supposed to do that already under a different manager Russell Slade but it was one of about eight managers that we've had in about the last three four years and um, it never happened we finished 13th in league one which was almost our record lowest league position ever now this is bad times at Charlton Athletic right bearing in mind we had those glory days and they were glory days and it's not that people expect us to be in the premiership every season it's just that we are 
embarrassing now. We are absolutely embarrassing. Now, one theme that these Belgian owners keep doing is lying to the fans about different situations. One of those situations is the transfer policies. So that brings us to today's news where we have been linked with someone in the transfer window today. Finally, even though we were supposed to get all sorts of signings in really early on, according to Carl Robinson, and it finally looks like we had people we had people in the building apparently, and this was like a month ago, over a month ago even. That sunlight needs to shut your mouth. So today, Charlton have been linked with a striker from Bradford. I'm just going to have a little look at his name because I can't remember. Billy Clark, okay, and he is a 29-year-old striker for Bradford City. Is this the kind of player that we need to be signing? So let's look at his stats. League-wise, he's played for Bradford since 2014, and he scored 23 goals in 91 appearances for Bradford. Now, if I look at Twitter, right, there's a guy, Louis Mendez, who's very, very good at sort of giving news, and he does interviews um, at Charlton in the building and stuff, and he's been asking some Bradford fans on Twitter what they think of this new guy who we've been linked with. We've got another few players that are supposed to be coming back. We're supposed to be getting the Arsenal starlet who came to us last season and then got injured, Mavadidi, back on loan, who is very good, and I think Charlton fans will be very happy with that. Jay De Silva, who's a left back from the Chelsea Academy, might come back on loan, I think. And also Ben Reeves from MK Dons, one of a player, one of the players that Carl Robinson's worked with before, quite a young midfield player, scores a lot of goals and stuff like that. They're the three players that I think are we're closest to signing. But anyway, so back to this guy, Billy Clark. So some Bradford fans say, good link up play, but very greedy and doesn't score enough. Misses his fair share of good chances. Best position is just behind a striker. Sounds like he's a number 10. Judging by his record, I don't want him to be, come and be the new prolific goal scorer. Uh, we've got a Jose there. We've got um, Maginis up front. We've got Tony Watt, who may or may not leave. And we've also got people like Vettikele in the club, who still haven't, their future still hasn't been sorted, although I don't think it's going to be at Charlton. Um, so what we really need is a clinical finisher who's like a proven goal scorer, someone who's going to be prolific. What I will say is that Charlton don't often sign stars that continue to be stars at Charlton. It's almost like we make our own stars. You look at Jan Kermagant, right, who, by the way, was one of the players that Duchatelet, when he first came in, said to Chris Powell, no, nah, he's not good enough. And he was pretty much booted out of the club. And obviously now, Charlton are 13th in League One, and Kermagant's playing in the Championship playoff final and scoring a penalty to help his team get to the Premier League, although they did miss out in the final. They lost Reading to Sheffield, to Huddersfield, sorry, not Sheffield Wednesday. So you can see the kind of mistakes that these guys are making. And anyway, he's an example of a player that w never really had any real success in his career, like massive success in his career before he came to Charlton. And we do tend to get a lot of players like that. Bradley Wright Phillips, another one maybe. Players that come to us and prosper at our club and become legends at our club. Johnny Jackson's another one. Our club captain now came from Tottenham and a few loan spells and that and came to our club and became an absolute legend. We don't often sign players that are already sort of very, very rated that can Continue. You look at a Jose last season who was a very highly rated League One, potentially even Championship striker, came to us with a great goal record, scored about six, seven goals last season, not good enough, went out on loan in January. So in that sense, this guy, perhaps, he's dividing opinion, perhaps this guy might be someone worth a punt. Uh, someone else says, runs around a lot, couldn't trap a bag of sand. Not sure what that means, but fair enough. The weakest shot you'll ever see. Now that shot power on FIFA, if it's under 60, I'm not having it, mate, because we need a finisher. To be competing at the top of League One, some big clubs in League One next season. Portsmouth, Blackpool, uh, clubs that got relegated such as Wigan. I don't know, there's, it's a very competitive league, more competitive than it once was. Someone else says he can be cons inconsistent, bit slow, but now and then he'll be excellent. Best employed is a 10, he's not a striker. Someone said he was decent before his injury, but he's not even League 2 quality since then, in my opinion. That's a pretty divided opinion on this guy. Now, I expected to see more signings, just to round this video off, I expected to see more signings by this point, but um, this guy... Uh, I wouldn't mind him if he came with someone else. I don't want him to be like the striker signing that we're making because we haven't got anyone else at the club who's prolific other than Ricky Holmes who isn't even a striker who plays left midfield and was playing out of position up front uh, some parts of the end of last season. So I wouldn't mind to see this guy. Obviously he's got a divided opinion but maybe he's worth a punt if we get him for a decent fee and he's not the star striker. Now what do you think, Charlton fans and non-Charlton fans, about this signing? Do you think that Charlton, especially given the context of where Charlton should be above where we are now, is this kind of player who, let me remind you, scored 23 goals in 91 appearances for Bradford at the age of 29, do you think he's good enough? 
Um, I think we need to get linked with a lot more players and I think that we need to make some sharp signings and movements in the transfer window. I know it doesn't open till July, but we're on the 7th of June and lots of other teams, as you're seeing right now, are already putting things in place to bring some players in. So that's it for this video. I will be updating every week with a little bit of a Cholton roundup of the week and see what's happened at the club. Um, if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe down below and also make sure you like the video, share it with Cholton fans, share it with your mum and even give your screen a little kiss. So if you're a Charlton fan, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe for the updates, and make sure you share it, and leave comments down below on your opinions. If you're not a Charlton fan, I hope you're interested in this story of real wrongdoings in football, and you're seeing it more and more lately, even with Orient, late in Orient, with Blackpool, a few years ago with Brighton. There's so many bad owners around in football right now that are just dr drilling clubs and driving clubs into the ground. And we are not going to have it. You know, we fought for our club back once and we're going to do it again. Anyway, take care, mate, and I'll see you on the next episode. Sweet.